Hey, what's good? All right, it's your boy Carl. Me and my grandparents here. We just had some dessert at this um, Manji Manji dessert. <laughs> I have no idea if I have no idea if they have an English name. But let me just change my tripod. Okay, hold up. Oh, it's not moving. Okay. So we are still in Jingdezhen. Um, yeah, we spend an afternoon just walking around this really lovely area called Tao Xichuan Tao Xichuan area Tao Xichuan ceramics area. <laughs> I have no idea if they call it like that. Okay, I just feel like to read this book, the creative act. A way of being. It is、uh, quite appropriate place to read a book such as this one about creativity and you know imagination and innovation. Okay,、um, but I have to mention that lately I just really feel like my English is getting kind of worse. I struggled a little bit more. Expressing myself and articulating my thoughts, but I think it is just an illusion. I don't have to really worry about that. I can still talk. If I mess up, if I didn't really find a good word to talk about whatever I need to talk about, that's okay. And I can always try again, right? Okay. This is not a one-time thing, and I always got another time to record more videos. Okay. All right. Again, my rules. Okay, beginner's mind definitely some really good topic. On page one twenty-five, beginner's mind. Some three thousand years ago in China, the strategic board game Go was developed. Some believe warlords and generals based it on the stones they place on maps to determine their battle plans. Besides being the oldest continually played board game in human history, is also one of the most complex. In modern times, building this game became known in the artificial intelligence community as the Holy Grail, since the number of possible configurations on the board is larger than the number of atoms in the universe. It was believed computers didn't have the processing power needed to beat a skilled human player. Rising to the challenge, scientists built an artificial intelligence program called AlphaGo. The program learned to play by teaching itself, studying more than a hundred thousand past games. It then played against itself over and over until it was ready to challenge the reigning grandmaster of the game. In move thirty-seven, the of the second match, the machine was faced with a decision that would determine the way the rest of the game would be played. There were two apparent choices to be made. Choice A was the kind of move that would signal the computer was playing a game of offense. Choice B would signal it was playing a defensive game. Instead, the computer decided to make a third move, a move no one stepped in the game had ever made in thousands of years of play. Not a single human player would choose move 37. One commentator said. Most thought it was a mistake or simply a bad move. The grandmaster playing against the machine was so taken aback, he stood up and walked out of the room. He eventually returned, not with his usual confident composure, but visibly shaken and frustrated by the experience. In the end, AlphaGo won the game, and that never been seen before move. Experts said. Was the one that turned the course of the game in favor of the AI. In the end, the computer won four out of five matches, and the grandmaster permanently retired from competition. Upon first hearing this story, I found myself in tears and confused by this sudden swell of emotion. After further reflection, I realized that the story spoke to the power of purity in the creative act. What was it that allowed a machine to devise a move no one stepped in the game had ever made in thousands of years of play? It wasn't necessarily its intelligence. It was the fact that the machine learned the game from scratch, with no coach, no human intervention, no lessons based on experts' past experience. 
The AI followed the fixed rules, not the millennia of accepted cultural norms attached to them. It didn't take into account the 3,000-year-old traditions and conventions of Go. It didn't accept the narrative of how to properly play this game. It wasn't held back by limiting beliefs, and so this wasn't just a landmark event in AI development. It was the first time Go had been played with the full spectrum of possibilities available. With a clean slate, AlphaGo was able to innovate, devise something completely new, and transform the game forever. If it had been taught to play by humans, it most likely wouldn't have won the tournament. One Go expert commented, "After humanity spent thousands of years improving our tactics, computers tell us that humans are completely wrong." I would go as far as to say not a th- single human has touched the edge of the truth of Go. To see what no human has seen before, to know what no human has known before, to create as no human has created before, it may be necessary to see as if through eyes that have never seen, know through a mind that has never thought, create with hands that have never been trained. This is beginner's mind. One of the most difficult states of being to dwell in for an artist, precisely because it involves letting go of what our experiences have taught us. Beginner's mind is starting from a pure childlike place of not knowing, living in the moment at, with as few fixed beliefs as possible, seeing things for what they are as presented, tuning in to what enlivens us in the moment instead of what we think will work. And making our decisions accordingly, any preconceived ideas and accepted conventions limit what's possible. We tend to believe that the more we know, the more clearly we can see the possibilities available. This is not the case. The impossible only becomes accessible when experience has not taught us limits. Did the computer win because it knew more than the grandmaster, or because it knew less? There's a great power in not knowing. When faced with a challenging task, we may tell ourselves it's too difficult, it's not worth the effort, it's not the way things are done, it's not likely to work, or it's not likely to work for us. If we approach a task with ignorance, it can remove the barricade of knowledge blocking progress. Curiously, not being aware of a challenge may be just what we need to rise to it. Innocence brings forth innovation. A lack of knowledge can create more openings to break new ground. The Romans thought they were making mainstream bubblegum pop. To most others, the lyrical content alone about lobotomies, sniffing glue, and pinheads was enough to challenge this assumption. While the band saw themselves as the next Bay City Rollers, they unwittingly invented punk rock and started a countercultural revolution. While the music of the Bay City Rollers had great success in its time, the Romans' singular take on rock and roll became more popular and influential. Of all the explanations of the Romans, the most apt may be innovation through ignorance. Experience provides wisdom to draw from, but it tempers the power of naivety. The past can be a teacher, offering tried and true methods. Familiarity with the standards of the craft, awareness of potential risks, and in some cases, virtuosity, it lures us into a pattern that absolves us of the opportunity to engage innocently with the task at hand. The more ingrained your adopted approach, the harder it is to see past it. Though experience doesn't rule out innovation, it can make it more difficult to access. Animals like children don't have a hard time making a decision. They act out of innate instinct, not learned behavior. This primitive force packs an ancient wisdom that science has yet to catch up with. These childlike superpowers include being in the moment, valuing play above all else, having no regard for consequences, being radically honest without consideration. And having the ability to freely move from one emotion to the next without holding on to a story, for children, each moment in time is all there is. No future, no past. I want it now. I am hungry. I'm tired. All pure authenticity. 
The great artists throughout history are the ones able to maintain this childlike enthusiasm and exuberance naturally. Just as an infant is selfish, they are protective of their art in a way that's not always cooperative. Their needs as a creator come first, often at the expense of their personal lives and relationships. For one of the most loved singer-songwriters of all time, if inspiration comes through, it takes precedence over other obligations. His friends and family understand that in the middle of a meal, conversation, or event, if a song calls, he will exact a thing and tend to it without explanation. Accessing childlike spirit in our art and our lives is worth aspiring to. It's simple to do if you haven't accumulated too many fixed habits and thoughts. If you have, it's very difficult, nearly impossible. A child has no set of premises it relies on to make sense of the world. It may serve you to do the same. Any level you assume before sitting down to create, even one as foundational as sculptor. Rapper, author, or entrepreneur could be doing more harm than good. Strip away the labels. Now, how do you see the world? Try to experience everything as if for the first time. If you grew up in a landlocked town that you never left, the first time you traveled and saw the ocean would likely be a dramatic or inspiring experience. If you spent your whole life living near the ocean, your experience of it would almost certainly be less dramatic. When you see what's present around you as if, for the first time, you start to realize how astonishing it all is. As artists, we aim to live in a way in which we see the extraordinary hidden in the seemingly mundane. Then challenge ourselves to share what we see in a way that allows others a glimpse of this remarkable beauty. Okay. Again, I want to thank this amazing technology that we all have right now. Internet and including all these greatest inventions like cameras, microphones, and we can just share, you know, so much of our lives and you know, you know, part of our lives with others. Yeah, it is it is amazing, but we have to have the courage to share them authentically. Yeah, it's good reading, man. I enjoy reading everywhere. You know, I am literally traveling with my grandparents, and I brought my book with me. I can read whenever we sit down, and yeah. Okay, talk to you later. Have a good day.